Hello, this is Eric Chappell, Community Evangelist for InfraWorks 360, and today I'd like to talk about what's new in Autodesk InfraWorks 360 as of February 8th, 2016. As you might guess, a lot has improved in this new release of InfraWorks 360, and for this presentation I've broken it down into four areas. InfraWorks 360 is easier to buy, it has better design context, it has more detailed engineering capabilities, and it has improvements in the collaboration and sharing functions. Why are these all important? Well, they're all reasons to go out and download and install the latest release as soon as possible. Let's start off by talking about how InfraWorks 360 is easier than ever to buy. As of this new release, InfraWorks 360 now includes all of the functionality of roadway design, bridge design, and drainage design. These are no longer a separate purchase on top of the base product. They're simply included with InfraWorks 360. What's more, even with this added functionality, you're going to find in most cases that there's a significant price reduction to the product. You're going to want to get on the phone with your reseller right away to find out what this price reduction means to you. Now, InfraWorks 360 LT is still available as part of the Infrastructure Design Suite Premium and Ultimate, and also Building Design Suite Ultimate, but you'll find that it's no longer available as a separate purchase. Another piece of big news about the availability of the product is that there's now an education license available. So if you're a student, a teacher, an instructor, or work anywhere in the education community, you'll be excited to know that you can now get your hands on InfraWorks 360 for free. So with this news, the packaging, and the reduced pricing, InfraWorks 360 is now more available to everyone than it's ever been before. Another area of improvement in this latest release of InfraWorks 360 is the ability to create better design context. Let's talk next about some model builder improvements. The first thing you'll notice is that when you open a model that's been created with Model Builder and you hover over one of the road features, let's say, the tooltip that comes up will include a link to the OpenStreetMaps source data. This gives you additional information about the data, where it came from, and when it was last updated. You'll also find better results around bridges. And finally, you'll notice that the result that you get from Model Builder is more current, more up-to-date, and more representative of what's out there in the field. We've recently updated our snapshot of the OpenStreetMap data, so we're feeding a newer version of that data into the Model Builder service. Why is this important? It gives you more confidence in the accuracy of the data that you're using to build the context that surrounds the designs that you're creating. A very exciting new addition to the software is something called a raster terrain overlay. This allows you to overlay just about any image on your InfraWorks 360 model, giving you full control over location, scale, and rotation. Now, if you've ever tried to do this in a prior release, you know that you can bring in imagery, but it's a little tough to get it oriented and rotated just where you need it to be. As you can see in the video here, you can grab just about any image and place it anywhere in the model. In fact, we're going to use some correlation tools in this next example to take a screen capture from Civil 3D and position it right on our InfraWorks 360 model. Notice how we're using opacity to see through the image to the model beneath. Now we're using some simple right-click correlation tools to simply align three points in the image with three corresponding points in the model. And it's as simple as point and double-click each of the points until you get the image lined up just the way you like it. You can also control the display order of your images using the Model Explorer panel in the software. This allows you to have multiple images in the model and bring them to the top, bring them to the bottom, and with that in combination with opacity you can do a lot of interesting things with leveraging these overlays in the software. Here we see some drainage area data overlaid on top of the model and also on top of the parcel map that we pulled from Civil 3D and you can imagine all of the different ways that you can leverage this capability to simply show more information in your model. Another thing you'll find with this latest update to InfraWorks 360 is the ability to upgrade the cloud version of a model. 
And if you plan on installing this upgrade, which you definitely should, this is something you're going to want to know about. So you have the ability to upgrade the cloud version of a model, and your first thought might be, well, that's a little scary. Does that mean anyone on my team can do that? And the answer is no. If you're the administrator of that model, you have full control over who has the capability of upgrading that model through the built-in permissions of InfraWorks 360. Your next question, I'm sure, could be, well, do I have to upgrade the model? And the answer is no. If you've installed the latest version of the software, or if anyone else on your team has, they can update a copy of the model and keep the cloud version intact. The important point to recognize is that upgrading the model no longer interrupts the team workflow because you're now able to upgrade the cloud version of the model, and it also guides you through the process. So you and your team can understand what's happening to the cloud version and to your local versions of the model as you work through the upgrade process. The bottom line, these changes minimize the amount of disruption at upgrade time, allowing you and your team to continue working on your projects while still being able to immediately benefit from the latest updates to the software. Another change you'll see with this latest update to InfraWorks 360 is an improved bookmark experience. Now, if you've never used bookmarks, they're extremely useful because they allow you to capture different view angles in your model and recall them anytime you need. Not only that, you can publish those view angles to the web so that you can share with somebody who maybe doesn't have the product and only has access to a web browser. You'll find that the bookmark menu has been redesigned, the icons are larger, and the whole experience with adding, naming, and removing bookmarks has become much simpler and smoother. You'll find some added functionality in that you can change the height of the bookmarks menu. You can make it as long or short as you want. And this can be really helpful because it's possible to have many, many bookmarks in your model, or maybe to just have a few. If you do have a lot of bookmarks in your model, you can use the search functionality at the top to type in a keyword, and InfraWorks 360 will filter the list of bookmarks to only show what matches your keyword. You can also use a handy icon to control whether a bookmark becomes a web panorama, just by simply toggling that feature on or off. And finally, a really useful feature in this latest release is the ability to update the bookmark thumbnails. As you know, as an InfraWorks 360 user, your model is always changing. And in this example, we're going to add a building. And when we look at the bookmark menu, currently the building doesn't exist. So we just simply refresh the bookmark thumbnails and the building gets added. So now we have an accurate representation of the model in our thumbnails and it makes more sense. So that's how easy it is to update those bookmark thumbnails. So why is all this important? It allows you to navigate the model more easily and also communicate your design to others more easily. And these are all things that InfraWorks 360 is already great at, but we've made them even better. Let's talk now about additions and enhancements that have been made with InfraWorks 360's detailed engineering capabilities. Let's start off with improved road editing performance. You'll find that in many areas when you're editing roads in this latest update to InfraWorks 360, they're just faster. You'll notice on the screen now as I'm making changes using the gizmos on the road, just making graphical changes, the changes are implemented much more quickly in the model. And if that's not enough for you, we've also made a change in the profile view so that you can make multiple edits within this view and they won't be committed to the model until your cursor leaves the window. Right about there, you'll see the cursor has left the profile editing window and now all of the changes that I made are implemented to the model at once. So why are these changes important? I think you'll all agree that designing faster is something that we all want to do and these changes allow you to do just that. In this latest update to InfraWorks 360, you'll see some exciting changes to the roundabout functionality. There are now more gizmos and asset cards for more control of the design. Here you can see there's a roundel asset card and gizmos associated with that. And there are also special gizmos associated with the arms of the roundabout. These give you more horizontal design capabilities than you've ever had before with roundabouts. And it doesn't stop there. There are also more 
vertical design capabilities. For example, as you flip the view into 3D, you can see that it's very easy to control the elevation of the roundabout, and also you can now control the tilt of the roundabout. Not only the tilt itself, but the direction. And you can see how easy it is to do this by simply manipulating the gizmos right in the model. And on top of that, we've expanded the capabilities of roundabouts by adding support for UK standards. Why is this important? It allows you to design with more detail. In this case, when you're designing roundabouts. If you work with highways, you'll be very excited to know that the latest update of InfraWorks 360 supports ramps. And they're easy. All you have to do is draw an intersection at a sharp angle, less than 45 degrees, and the ramp appears magically. The configuration automatically includes an acceleration or deceleration lane, and of course it's editable, so you can go in and change the length of that lane or change the transitions that are associated with it. So why is this important? Again, it allows you to design with more detail. A moment ago we looked at an example with roundabouts. It's the same idea here where you can address ramp design in your model faster and easier and more accurately than ever before. Okay, this one is special. Of all the wish lists that are out there for InfraWorks 360, I'm going to bet that you're going to find a left turn lane capability near the top of every single one. Now we're calling it a center turn lane because if you're overseas where driving on the left side of the road is the standard, then it becomes a right turn lane, correct? So that's why we're referring to it as a center turn lane. It's very easy to create one, it's just a matter of clicking a gizmo in the intersection, just like adding a widening has been a function in the software for quite some time. And then once the turn lane is created, you can see also how easy it is to manipulate it and change its geometry. So once again, another example of updates to the software enabling you to design with more detail and to do it more quickly. In this case, there have been workarounds and workflows that have enabled you to generate a left turn lane, but they are in no way as simple as this one. There are even more improvements associated with road design. First, you'll find that more complex intersections are possible. Look at the image in the top right corner and try doing that with your current version of InfraWorks 360 and then try it again once you've installed the update. In traffic simulation, we've made some improvements as well. We've made it easier to interface with the results of a traffic simulation. We've also made it possible to export your results so that you can include them in reports or do calculations or format them in any way you like. This has also been an item that's been pretty high on the wish list. So why is this important? It gives you more control over the results of your design, intersections and traffic simulation alike. Another addition you'll see in this update to InfraWorks 360 is the ability to assign textures to your bridge components. Here in the example video, we're assigning a brick texture to this pier. You'll also find that the textures themselves are pretty incredible. They're multi-scale textures, which means you can zoom in very closely and they look great, or you can zoom out and they still look great. They actually change as your view distance changes. Now we introduced multi-scale textures a release or two ago, but we're expanding them and adding more of them in this version. Why is this important? It allows you to create more realism and higher quality to the appearance of your models. This means you can go from design to communicating your design with little or no effort. We've also got some big news in the area of drainage design. You can now use your own rainfall data for sizing and analyzing drainage. As you can see, I'm going to click on the rainfall content icon, go over here to the right, and now there's a special panel for creating your own IDF rainfall data. And there's a number of different types of IDF data that you can create. You can import it from a, from a file. We support some common formats out there that you can import. Or you can go in and manually type in the values for your rainfall data if you choose. You can assign that data to different functions in the software. For example, we're going to size this pipe based on a different rainfall data file than we had before. So we use the size drainage network command, choose our Ozark rainfall data in this case, 
and you'll notice that the pipe size is going to change from one size to another based on this updated rainfall data. Another capability we have in this new release is the ability to import 2.5D pipe data. Now what do I mean by that? Let's say you've got some GIS data where the pipes and structures are defined in 2D but there are attributes attached to those pipes and structures that define inverts. We can now import that data and have it become full 3D pipe and structure data in the InfraWorks 360 model. So with the rainfall data and the ability to support 2.5D pipe data, why is this important? Well, it gives you more control over the results of your design. There's even more to talk about with the drainage design functionality of InfraWorks 360. You'll notice that we're adding an inlet and pipe that is actually off the road surface. It's in this parking lot area. We now have the capability with this latest release to analyze pipes that are not within the road surface. And what makes that possible is the ability to edit some of the fields that we couldn't edit before, like tributary area, time of concentration, and runoff coefficient. And here you can see that it's using the numbers that we enter, looking at the rainfall data, and choosing a rainfall intensity for this particular inlet that's leading into the pipe. Once we've provided our own custom information, we can then use the other tools in the software to analyze this pipe. We'll start with inspect performance, and we'll take a look at our pipe that we've put in by default and see if it actually will handle the flow that we've calculated. And we can see as a result of this analysis that the pipe is surcharged. It's, it's not going to work, in other words. So we'll go ahead and size the drainage network and ask InfraWorks 360 to automatically fix that for us and it'll go in and check all the pipes in the network and update this particular one to make sure it can pass the flow that we've determined it needs to pass. And now when we inspect the performance, we can see that it is, it is performing as it should. So why is this important? It allows you to create more detailed designs, in this case, by enabling you to create pipes and structures that are outside the road surface. The last area we're going to cover is improved collaboration and sharing. Hopefully you're aware that InfraWorks 360 has the ability to publish your models to the web in several different forms, making it easy to share them with anyone, anywhere. We've improved that capability by first adding this web administrator portal, which allows you to control what's being published to the web. And you can see your choices are scenarios, panoramas, and now proposals which is another big capability that we've added. In the past, you could only publish the master proposal, but now we're giving you the control of publishing any proposal in the model that you wish. We're also providing higher resolution panorama views. And we're also, as you saw earlier, allowing you to enable and disable the creation of panoramas right from the bookmarks menu. Why is this important? It allows you to share your designs with anyone more effectively than you've ever done before. So after seeing what you've just seen, I'm sure you're very excited to go out and download the latest version as soon as possible. There are a few different ways you can do this. If you're a current customer, keep your eye on the Application Manager. In fact, after you're done viewing this presentation, I'd go ahead and check it now and see if the software update is available. You can also download the update at manage.autodesk.com. Now, if you're not an InfraWorks 360 customer, no problem. You can download a 30-day trial at the URL shown below and go ahead and try this software out for 30 days. Whatever technique you use, as soon as this presentation's over, go out and download the latest version of InfraWorks 360 so you can benefit from all of the great changes that have been made. Once again, I'm Eric Chappell, Community Evangelist for InfraWorks 360. And I'd like to thank you for watching this presentation on what's new in Autodesk InfraWorks 360.